Welcome to TJD Movie Reviews, episode 34. We watched Big Trouble in Little China. Woo! I'm Ty. Jake. And I'm Drew. Yes, this was my pick. I know I uh, teased a couple different films, but I decided Jake and Drew had done enough times where they came in with saying that they were going to do a film and then didn't do it that I decided, you know what, I'll do it myself. Have you not done this before? I probably have. Oh, okay. This is probably the first time in a long time that you actually picked a competent film that wasn't a piece of dog shit. <laughs> oh, shit! Okay, Stay Shots Alive, what's fired. a piece of dog shit? What was the film I did before that? Um, I don't know. Some piece of shit. Well, what, what? I'm gonna have to look. I was running down the list today, and there were a lot that <laughs> were very bad. I think the last one you did where I, that I liked was Little Giants. And that was the one before... Oh, no, MacGruber. Yeah, MacGruber is... MacGruber. <laughs> MacGruber is like not watching anything at all. Uh, 9.9. 9. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> you kind or, of just get up and you're like, well, that's my afternoon. Okay, come on. It's better than a lot of films we've watched. Spies Like Us, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's better than Spies Like Us. Because then I had Little Giants and then before that was Carriers, but that was a listener request. That doesn't mean that it gets a pass. <laughs> Then Ghostbusters, but that was because I needed to see for myself. Ghostbusters was a necessary cancer that one of us would have picked anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How dare uh, you say that? <laughs> Mortal Kombat is an amazing film. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance is that, terrible. It's terrible. Your, your track record's not great, Ty. Tusk. I mean, Tusk was a rare, outstanding gem. <laughs> what about The Town? The Town is, the, like, the, the best movie legit. you've picked. Easily. The best movie you've picked. <laughs> However, spoiler alert, I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I did as well. Um, so to go into Big Trouble in Little China, it's a 1986 film starring Kurt Russell and really no one else. Kim Cattrall, I guess. But... Uh, James, it's James Hong or James Wong? I don't remember his name. You would recognize him. He's had bit parts. He does the voice of the, uh, of Poe's father in, well, Poe's adopted father, the goose in Kung Fu Panda. He's also an R.I.P.D. He, he's had several bit parts in different shows and movies. Very recognizable voice. Yes. Um, but it's a story about man and his truck. Mm-hmm. That's it. Man and his love for his truck. Uh, so much more than that, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so Kurt Russell is a trucker who just uh, happens to be delivering something to San Francisco, Chinatown, and has a friend there. He, he obviously, they have some sort of rapport, and they he gets stuck tailing around with him because the guy owes him money. He won it in poker and other bets. Yeah, they're playing dominoes. Yeah, or was it dominoes? Yeah, I think it was dominoes. Okay. Yeah. Some back back room dominoes. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, anyways. Um, back alley dominoes. Yeah. Then they get caught up in this whole uh, entanglement of these gangs in Chinatown after the one friend gets his now mail order bride. I don't know. What what was she exactly? Do you I think? don't know. They don't really He's... explain it. He's like, I need to go to the airport to pick up my, my girlfriend. My, yeah, my I'm going to marry this girl. Yeah. But she gets kidnapped. Then they get entangled with these two rival gangs. And Jack's truck gets stolen. Jack Burton, who's Kurt Russell, his truck gets stolen. And the rest of the film is him, one, trying to help his friend get the girl back. Two, trying to get his truck back. Three, trying to help Kim Cattrall prove that the leader of the bad gang is running women or running a sex trade or uh, what do you want to call it? Human trafficking? Yeah. And then fourthly, trying to stop a demon from overtaking the world. He's got a lot on his plate. Yeah. All trying to do this while being cocky as hell, John Wayne-esque, and being a bumbling buffoon. So, yeah, and that, that 
sums up big trouble in little China without going too in depth. I think if he would have got us thirteen hundred dollars, that he would have been out. Yeah. Even oh. if he was like, "Hey, can you help well, me out?" He no, like, it was eh. it was double or nothing. So actually, with two thousand ninety two dollars. But he already had the thirteen hundred, right? Well, no, he originally had the one thousand forty eight. It was one thousand forty eight. Okay. And then he said double or nothing. He couldn't cut the bottle in half, so he owed him then another thousand forty eight. So it's like two thousand ninety six dollars. Which to a trucker back in nineteen eighty six, you know, fuck to me now, <laughs> two thousand ninety six dollars. Yes, I think be, yeah, yeah, no I'd take that money. I would definitely take that. <laughs> but yeah, um, fuck, I'd fight a demon for that much money. <laughs> this was this was directed by John Carpenter, and this was actually his last film he released with a major studio. So John Carpenter's Vampires was a. Uh... I don't even know if he directed that. I think that was produced by him. There's always that yeah. distinction that I can say. Like, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas is not actually directed by Tim Burton. Yeah. It, so, Or even, I he's like executive producer or he had screenplay or something. Yeah, I don't know. It was, yeah, it's the guy that did uh, Coraline actually yep. did that. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So, but it, on top of it, it says Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas. Did you ever see Coraline? Yeah. It's good. It's creepy. Yeah. But the uh the critical reception and the and the uh fan reception of this film kind of really upset John Carpenter. So the audi- I should say audience reception of this film was not negative or very mixed and so he's like screw it. I'm going to make films on my own dime not have executives tell me what to do and I could get that frustration like mm-hmm. if you really believe in what you're doing and it just doesn't pan out. Or... Well, and like this film, he wanted Kurt Russell, but the studio was a little worried about him. But uh, Carpenter had worked with him in The Thing. He had worked with him on... Uh, Escape from New York. Escape from New York. And there was an... He also did Escape from L.A. later with him. There was another film before this, though, that he worked on him with, but I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, he, he, he enjoyed working with Kurt Russell. And Kurt Russell was like, yeah, I've been flopping at the box office recently. I don't want to hurt your film. And he's like, I just want to make a movie with you. But, of course, Fox was pushing to have it be Clint Eastwood or Jack Nicholson. Well, history would show that Fox doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. No. But what about Lionsgate? I think they're an idiot. They Lionsgate makes shit for so cheap, though, that yeah. they can just churn it out and eventually something sticks somewhere. Like and all they, those saws. Either that or they'll just they'll just make money. Like they can churn out all these all these low budget movies. Activity or make money. Yeah. Printing money. Saw. So in terms of I don't know, ethics, are we really gonna say any of the movie companies are ethical? No. I mean, they're all in the business of making cash. It's a for-profit business. You're, right. I think your ethics go out the window when millions of dollars are in play. But this this film did, over the years, even though it was kind of poorly mixed, re, mixedly received when it came out. Poorly mixedly? Yeah, poorly mixedly. Wow. Um, <laughs> poorly mixedly <laughs> received. Um... It has gained a big cult following, and I, I lo- lo- my my dad actually is the one who made me watch this film when I was younger, and I loved it. It was great. It's very fast paced, and that's why like he doesn't like dwell on any setting or anything. It just quick talking, quick action, on to the next scene. What's this rated? Uh, you mean like as in a yeah P- PG thirteen? I think it's PG actually. It's- PG-13. Is it PG-13? Yes. Oh, I thought it was like PG. Well, I don't think you can throw a fuck at a P- Well, back then, maybe. Yeah, yeah, back then you could. But, uh, I can see I can see why it has the following that it does. I mean, even... Uh, there's some stuff here and there that's dated, but but I can, I can definitely, definitely see why people enjoy this film. So, I, I got a pro. Okay. Um... That you'll have to kind of explain. You said that John Carpenter had come out and said he wasn't happy with the special effects in this movie. Yeah. And it wasn't, I don't think it was everything, but it was like a $2 million budget for special effects. And this company they used, I think it was called Big Boss, 
and they were actually doing the Ghostbusters as well. And he felt they got second fiddled to the Ghostbusters okay. and special effects. And he all his biggest complaint was the uh, what do you call it? The eye monster that sees everything. Oh, the I call it the Gorgon. The Gorgon, yeah. yeah. It, it's this giant ball that has a bunch of eyes that the the villain uses to be able to see everything. I thought it looked great. I thought most of the shit in this movie looked great. I thought your lightning storm guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was awesome. The lightning looks pretty fucking good. Um, like, we were joking up there that Mortal Kombat looked like absolute dog shit compared to this. And it comes out, what, eight years later, we said? Yeah. yeah. This, no, it. I thought the eye monster even looked good, like, when it zips down the hallway after mm-hmm. Kurt Russell shoots at it. Like, There's a couple different creatures that... I mean, they look pretty damn good for 86. Yeah, like your your werewolf creature didn't look half bad. Um, and for a $2 million budget. Right. I mean, I, I could understand something something like Ghostbusters coming out and feeling like kind of overshadowed by mm-hmm. it. But I thought the special effects were really good. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know why it was uh why why he had a complaint but yeah he didn't care for the special effects company and they act, but they came out and they're like well he can say what he wants we actually really enjoyed working on this so so they handled it well yeah they're yeah. like you know he it's his opinion but we think we worked really hard on it and we actually enjoyed doing it so no for for the year that it came out i was expecting much worse yeah, but like you said, I, I thought the lightning, like when it's traveling all over the one guy's body and he's like using it all over his arms and yeah. then shooting it out, it looks great. Yeah. I mean, hell, I'd take that in some films today. Right. You know, you could polish it up a little bit, but mm-hmm. no, I I think the special effects are just fine. No, I agree. I, I, I enjoy them. Um, Pro, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Absolutely. I not only just love him as an actor but i love how he portrays this character john wayne-esque we made fun of it well no, not really we we didn't make fun of it but we we acknowledged it it's really noticeable <laughs> but he did it intentionally so like how his snake Pliskin is supposed to be modeled after clint eastwood this was modeled after john wayne and what's funny is like he carries himself like john wayne but as you watch the film, he's just a bumbling idiot who happens to be in this situation as a hero. He he barely contributed. Yes. He yet yet he he kind of takes the credit for everything. Mhm. And there's a big thing at the beginning of this film. It starts with um Egg Shu or what's his name? It's Egg. I know it's his first name, but um the older guy that the, gave the tours. Yeah. Um the What's going on up there? So the the tour guide you'll you'll meet in the film Egg is his first name, but other than that, um, he's in a lawyer's office and they're trying to. I guess he's like being indicted or something on something or another. Like there's something going on, and he's talking to his lawyer and they're asking about Jack Burton and that whole thing. And he's like, "You should stay away from Jack Burton. He's a hero. You know, we need no one should mess with him. He." did something no one knows about to save us. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, Fox made Carpenter put that scene in the film to I, I make was, it seem more like Burton is a bigger hero. I was just going to ask, like, as you were talking about it, and it's reminding me of that scene, that felt totally weird yeah. compared to the rest of the movie. It was kind of out of place. But Fox may put it in there because they wa- they watched the film and they're like, Jack doesn't look like the hero, which he really wasn't. Like, they yeah, just didn't get it. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't get it that he is a hero, but he's not. Like, he has false bravado, I guess. Uh, can you imagine Carpenter's frustration when they're like, "Well, Jack's like not like heroic. He's like that's the fucking point. Yep, that's what I'm trying to do." <laughs> like you, you watch the whole movie unfold, and like he. Like you said, he doesn't contribute at all. He's not until like right at the end. Yeah, he's like he's not fighting anybody. Something happens and he gets knocked out, or and, and it's, it's funny. funny. Yeah. yeah, it's like this is the guy you're supposed to be like watching, but like everyone else is doing all their shit and getting stuff done, and he's fucking up. Well, because he looks and acts 
just exactly like that 80s like action hero. Mm-hmm. And that's what's great about it is because Kurt Russell was an 80s action hero. Right. That's what I thought this movie was going to be. But like it actually really surprised me when I'm like, okay, they're kind of poking fun at it. Mm-hmm. I had a pro. Soundtrack. Yeah, Jake, you that that first song kicked on. You're like, yeah. I thought you were joking. <laughs> no, I yeah, I I wasn't being sarcastic at all. It it, it works. That shit like, gets you amped. It it pulls you into that time period. And I really don't think there was like any major song or anything, was there? Doesn't need to be. Yeah, like, no, it's, I don't remember there being. It's any... all instrumental, just background music. Total and... '80s synth fest. It was awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I have nothing to complain. So, Kim Cattrall, is that a pro? I think she's okay. I mean, she had Police Academy before this. I can't remember if Manic. I don't think Mannequin was before this. I think Mannequin was eighty seven or eighty eight. Well, she looks good. She's she's a pretty face. I she, I think she was just there. She was a little stilted with her acting. Like she she was acting as if she was on stage, not in the movie. Sometimes. I got that impression. Well, she looks good. Yeah. No, she does. <laughs> and she makes Kurt Russell work for it. I wear some lipstick. Yeah. That was actually a really funny scene. I love that yeah, scene. Was, that it's was great. All fucking teeth. And then he has to go fight Lopan. <laughs> he does. He acts as if it's they, not They there. don't even acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, see, that that's great. It's just those little small things. You just like... He doesn't even care. Well, that pan didn't even care when he showed yeah. up. He's like, oh, this fucking guy. <laughs> He's wearing lipstick for some reason. Whatever. <laughs> Which is why it was so surprising when he actually catches the knife and throws it back at him. It's all about reflexes. And, and says that line, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> the, the, all right. The one thing he does uh, to contribute. <laughs> um, another pro... Uh, the casting of the actual hero in this film. Wang? Yeah. That guy was good. Yeah. It was originally supposed to be Jackie Chan, but Jackie turned it down. He didn't want to do it. And actually, that was to, the, I think, the benefit of this film. I'd agree. Jackie Chan is very hard to understand. understand. Especially 1980s Jackie Chan. Yeah. Oh. Before he got... You know, more English lessons. <laughs> yeah, like Rumble in the Bronx and yeah. all that good Cop stuff. story or something like that. Yeah. Speaking of that, I got, I don't know if it's a pro or a con. Would you call it a, a con? The, the Chinese people who are very white <laughs> and speaking English... You made a comment, I think, Jake, that they speak better English than you do. They sound more American than yeah. you do. Would you call it a pro to add to, like, the uh, uh, the satire of the movie? Or I, I guess it's subjective to what you want. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want authentic, that's probably weird to you that you're like, wow, this guy sounds totally American. Do you think that added to the movie, though, them being so... Uh, articulate with their English. I think it helped me personally follow all the dialogue better, mm -hmm. but that's because I'm ignorant and I don't pick up on, you know, I it's it gets hard for me to follow different languages, like when your accent's really thick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like early Chow Young Fat, when he yeah when he talked like it hard was, boiled, mm -hmm. and... it's like I cut most of that. Like I understand stand what he was trying to convey but like did i catch every word no <laughs> yeah i think i think it helped in terms of like exposition for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not um, that there's a lot in this film but there there's some important pieces well the other thing though is almost everybody in the movie is chinese mm -hmm. so it i i can get why they did it to make it easier to follow because if you you know if you have a hard time piecing together what one person says, chances are you're going to have a hard time with most of it. I don't know. I'm, I'm dancing a fine line trying not to say anything that gets me in trouble. Well, so you're saying basically if Carpenter went and hired like 200 Chinese people that came off the boat, it would have hurt the movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, it... Well, and we could tell in some of those fight scenes, 
Not all those people were Asian. No, no, Chinese. they weren't. <laughs> no, they weren't. Was, one of them looks like Danny McBride. <laughs> I swear, there was one white guy who played on both sides and got killed 12 times. Amazing. <laughs> I was like, what? I even call that a pro, the, uh, the bouncy concrete and shit like that. So, yeah, the very first fight scene, not including the airport, but the actual true first fight scene where they're, they're running down this alley with this semi and they get caught in a gang war, Kurt Russell and Wang do. And... Um, they, uh, they, you see the two gangs fighting, and you see a guy get slammed into the concrete, and it just bounces. And then you see somebody get hit into a wall, and the wall like caves in, and it's like, hmm, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is a studio. Gotta love that bouncy concrete <laughs> and that that plastic glass that adds yeah. sound effects in the background. Or uh, how about breaking out of that guy's leg? It just you know kind of bends. <laughs> or that arm break. <laughs> yeah, that arm break was pretty great. Uh, genuinely loved it <laughs> everybody getting th- thrown through a window gotta love the camp I got a pro yeah dialogue yes I, I it was very snappy Kurt Russell was very funny like everything Kurt Russell says is pretty much gold mm-hmm. he, he's such such a cocky son of a bitch in this film much like John Wayne. Pilgrim. <laughs> Did John Wayne ever play Pilgrim? No, he played Genghis Khan. <laughs> and he shouldn't have. Uh, uh, John Wayne is Genghis Khan. Is that more offensive than Mickey Rooney? In Breakfast at Or Tuesday? as you said, Mickey Rourke. <laughs> I mean, they're the same person. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember when Mickey Rooney was the wrestler? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I need to see this film. Good luck. (laughs) Pretty sure he's dead. Mickey Rooney died? I thought he died like years ago. Oh my god, is Mickey Rooney alive? Because he was just in the Muppets movie like back in 2010. Yeah, yeah, he died uh, uh, two years ago. See, so it, it wasn't that long ago. Because, yeah, he was in that Muppets movie with Jason Segel. Wow, he lived in 93. That's something I will never do. Because <laughs> it goddamn sure of it. Because it was funny, uh, Jason Segel said uh, after they rapped for him, because he has like a five-second cameo, Blink and You Miss It, he went around like thanking everyone, and Jason's like, you- you're done. <laughs> Not that he was trying to be mean, but he was like, you know, it's like, well, thank you, this is great. But, but he did it in yellow face. He was <laughs> like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Or, or is it more racist for uh, Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic, Tropic Thunder, Thunder? Which actually was satirical. It, it wasn't being, you know, he wasn't intending. That, that's the only way you could do that. Yes. They found one way to do that, and they did it, so kudos to them. And, the, you know, they actually, like, they, they thought they'd get a lot of blowback for that, but no, he got nominated for a Golden Globe. But they got more in trouble for the the fake movie Ben Stiller was in that was in there. The uh, special Tom or special mm-hmm. Todd or whatever it was. Uh, uh, you never go full retard. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. Simple Jack. Simple Jack, that it is. There it is. Simple Jack. Yeah, they got a lot more flack for that. Which, again, was satire. They're making fun of movies like I Am Sam or... Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Rain Man. Rain Man. Uh, Rain Man's a little different, though. Wasn't that... Oh, uh, no, never mind. I guess you're right. Uh, it's been years since I've seen Yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, do we have a con for this film? I was going to say... Uh... Um... It's it's kind of asinine, but occasionally they'd be talking about something and I wouldn't know exactly what they were going to do, if that makes any sense. Like, mm. when they start talking about all this, like, history and stuff, until the next scene, like, starts to actually unfold, I don't always follow exactly what's happening at the moment. But that could just be me not being smart or not following close enough or something. No, there, there are sometimes, I think... They had something in mind, and then it turns out differently. But, 
I don't know. Like, I think... Sorry, I, I, I would just say that's not, like, enough of an issue to call it no. a legitimate con. It's just worth mentioning, I thought. Mm-hmm. But, and uh... I... You know, the, the, the actual... Like, the stinger ending I thought was kind of worthless. Like, when he's actually back in his truck driving away... That ending was kind of poignant until it cut to him. Because for a minute, what I thought was going to happen was he was just going to ride off talking into the radio. And I thought, that's kind of sad. Like, this dude spent this whole movie hyping up how much of a badass he is. And then he kind of leaves Kim Cattrall wanting yeah. more. Doesn't even kiss her at the end. Doesn't no. even fuck her or nothing. Which, which I think was kind of like an old, you know, like an old school, you always leave the girl wanting more. It, it was like a western where he just, he rides off into the yeah, sunset. You, you kind of tip your hat and yeah. you take off. I'll see you later, Pilgrim. Yeah, which, which is what he did. But uh, I, I thought it was going to go in a different direction. See, yeah, because she even offers, she's like, you know, if you got a bigger cab in your truck. Yeah, you can and, take me with. And he was like, we'll see. So kind of like pretty much no, but. And then they're even like, aren't you going to kiss her? And he's like, no. And what does is, what is he say? She says, well, I see you again. And he's or she goes, I'll see you around, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bert. I'll see you around, Burton. And he goes, uh, what does he say? Something like, never can tell. Like, yeah, as something in, like, like that. You maybe. Know, maybe I'll be back. Maybe I won't. And then it's just, yeah, cuts to him talking in the truck. You know, what he was doing in the beginning, basically. Mm-hmm. He's on the CB radio. And, and, he, and he's trying to be a hard ass. Talk. About, pretty much talking about the three storms. Yeah. Who were the three... There were these, which we should acknowledge who the three storms are. So, James Wong, his Lu Pang, the evil villain demon, has Lu like. Kang? What? Lu Kang? Yes. Has. Lu. <laughs> has three henchmen, and they're called the three storms. One, like, they all, I think, can control lightning. Or is only one of them able to control lightning? It seems like one was, like, really big on lightning. But, like, all of them could fly? Yeah. I thought in the alley they all had lightning, though, See, when they came See, I down. thought so, too. I think they all have, like, ability of lightning, but one of them really uses it more than the others. One is highly proficient. Yes. The others are just studying it mm-hmm. on the weekends. One is, like, immensely strong. He's kind of a Hulk character. And then the other one is just really finesse, I guess. Yeah, he's like a dexterity type of guy. Like yeah. He's a sword play yeah, shit. swords, yeah. yeah. And... So, Burton is talking about, you know, the three, he's like, you know, when it's thundering and then there's lightning and it's raining, so he's, like, making a reference to them and how, like, he's like, you just gotta, like, work through it and keep on and right. or something like that. So, a callback about, even though he did nothing to any of them. <laughs> nope, he didn't do any, he did not hit one of them. Well, he killed the main guy. Yeah, but yeah, he did nothing to the storms. Uh, he hit the one with the giant statue. Nope, that wasn't him. That was Egg. Oh, I thought that Burton had pushed that. Nope, he said he Egg told Burton, "Here, hold this." He grabbed the statue and dropped it. Oh, yeah, I must have missed that. And then the other one blows himself up. Yeah. And then the other one is killed by Wang. So yeah, awkward silence. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's hard to find a con. It, as, as long as you know going into this film, it it is campy. Really, there there, it's hard to find a con. Which I don't know. You didn't really tell us that's no. what it was going to be. Nope, I didn't tell you um, anything about this film except Kurt Russell was in it. Because yeah, like like I had said, I'd always intended to watch this. I had never seen it before, but from everything I had seen. You know, the way that he looks in this movie, you're like, it, it's 80s action. Mm-hmm. But it's more than that, which was good. It was refreshing. I agree. I And see, when I was younger, I saw this film, I had no idea there was a difference between being an artistic film or being, like, just a stupid film and that. Like, the, it, to me, a movie was a movie. But this one always stuck out. I always remembered it, especially that final fight scene. 
like when they're all in that giant room and the oh, Alice Cooper breaking loose. Yeah, the Alice Cooper looking statues and everything. But and then Kurt Russell knocks himself out. <laughs> I, I love when well, we'll talk about that later when we, we do our favorite scenes. Oh, okay. Dude, that, that one set they had when uh Dave the demon Asian guy was getting married. That set was awesome. Mm-hmm. With the escalator and the... <laughs> I don't know. So I guess, like, all the sets were pretty cool. Like... Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I can't really describe... You just have to watch the movie to get the full it, effect. To me, it looked like something out of, like, either an Alice Cooper concert or music video with, like, all the neon green lights and the skulls and the, the mm-hmm. demon faces. Mm-hmm. I was like... A lot of Buddhas and stuff everywhere, too. Yep. Mila Wake. Yes, Mila Wake. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We suck. <laughs> uh, if you had to choose between seeing Ozzy in concert or Alice Cooper, which would you do? Could only see one. What year are we talking? Are we talking or, the peak of both of them? Yes, peak. Is this Ozzy with Sabbath, or is it Ozzy? Ozzy on his own. Mm. But he will play some Sabbath. Uh, I, I'm going to go Alice Cooper then. Yeah, I'll go with Alice Cooper. That's surprising. I thought you guys would pick Ozzy. I, I, I would say Cooper, but... Outside of Sabbath, I don't really... Mm. What about know, Mama, I'm Coming You don't home. fuck with the Osborne. No. Was Crazy Train Sabbath, or was that Ozzy? That was Ozzy. That's Ozzy. No More Tears is pretty good, like... I don't know, it's, it's, it's just that I like more Alice Cooper than Ozzy. Mm. Plus that stage show, though. Oh, yeah. You know, Alice, Alice Cooper helped kill a chicken one time. He helped kill a chicken? Um, he was at, doing a concert, and this was before he was big. And this actually helped his career. Is He was at some county fair singing, and he was pretty much getting booed at. People were throwing shit at him. And then somebody threw a chicken on stage. And he got so fed up, he threw it back into the crowd, and they ate it. Like, they literally ripped the chicken apart, and then started throwing the chicken pieces at him. <laughs> He's what like, what the fuck yeah. are you telling me right now? It's the weirdest <laughs> shit ever. He threw, somebody threw a live chicken, chicken on, on the stage. stage. Drew, you have a live chicken thrown at you? <laughs> Did yeah, I even I'll... word that? <laughs> Drew, you have a live chicken? Have you ever had a live chicken thrown at you? Every every concert I play. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> what the, who throws a live chicken? How do you get a live chicken into a venue? It was, it was a county fair concert. Oh, he was playing a, co- he was playing a county fair? Well, like, something like that. It was an, like an open air area. It was So it wasn't like, you know... Who throws a goddamn chicken <laughs> on stage? If you're really pissed, you go find a chicken and you throw it on stage. Why would you be that mad at Alice Cooper where you're like, you know what? I'm well, gonna like get a live chicken. Like I said, this was before his big... You know, uh... He, he played Feed My Frankenstein and they started throwing the chickens. I think this oh, was before funny. Frankenstein. But you know... Uh, what, do you know what band won Jimi Hendrix's first, uh, leads, what he was a lead for? What? The Monkees. Jimi Hendrix opened for the Monkees one time, and he got booed off stage. Jesus Christ. Why, why are you telling me this terrible they don't even, The Monkees don't even play their own instruments. Yes, they did. They weren't how to. They were just a fake band. It's like Millie Vanilli. No, they're not Millie Vanilli. No, Millie Vanilli literally didn't. <laughs> they were just there to be there. No, I guess they danced. So yeah, you paid to watch two people lip sync and dance around on a stage. Actually, that's probably not that different from most of the shit you see now. <laughs> Ashley Simpson. Yeah. Remember when she danced her jaunty jig and then her career was fucking over? Wasn't that Saturday Night Live? Yeah. <laughs> She starts going like, yeah, I remember. I kind of remember awkwardly that. shuffles off stage, and you're like, "Well, she just died." <laughs> you ever seen a career end? <laughs> you oh, can ever yeah. pinpoint. I I remember seeing that. I didn't see it live. I saw it taped. Oh, I saw I was it like, live. I was like, "Oh shit!" It was so fucking weird. Like it, it takes a moment because you've seen I don't know SNL. By the time that's on, mm-hmm. your brain's turned off, and you're so used to the show just going on without a hitch or anything and then 
that weird shit goes down and she just shuffles off stage and you're like, okay, that's going to be on the news. Yeah, um, actually what happened is the chickens actually had been traveling with the band. See, when I heard the story, Alice told the story, they failed to mention that part, but the the bassist for Alice Cooper's band, like he did a podcast or something and revealed the they had actually been traveling with the chickens and they got loose. So So he picked a random chicken up. And well, it ran out to the crowd, they threw it back on stage, and so then he or he threw it back out and then they tore it apart. Did they th- do you think okay, you're in the crowd at this show. Do you think they thought it was like a prop and they were trying to grab it? Like I a, don't like a guitar pick or something? Like uh, you know when the band throws shit in the crowd? Fan, fans get antsy when they well, see shit thrown out in the crowd. Mm-hmm. And then Frank Zappa like called him the next day, like, "Did you kill a chicken on stage?" And he goes, "No, dude. Why would I do that?" He goes, "Well, don't tell anyone you didn't, because they are loving it. Like, it became like a big myth that he killed the chicken on stage. Like how wow. Ozzy bit the head off a dove, which actually did happen. It's a but... bat. No, it was a dove. He did it to a dove first. The bat was the urban legend. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was actually a dove." Because, yeah, he was so fucking high, he didn't even know he did it. That's how you get avian flu. Because he, like, he signed, I think it was he signed his solo contract, and he was so high, they released doves, though, to be like, yeah, you know, this is great. And he just, one landed on the table, he grabbed it and bit its head off, and then walked out of the room. (laughs) All these execs are sitting there. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. (laughs) Along with whatever else he's done in his lifetime. Anyways, we are way off Big Trouble in Little China. Jack Burton's the shit. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I will be watching this again. See, it came out at Alamo. And I, like you said, you wanted to go see it. I wanted to go see it. I've seen this movie like ten times. I wanted to go see it at Alamo. Yeah, they had a like a special menu too. Like they were doing like mm. a three-course meal with Chinese food and, like, all this stuff. I was going to say, I wonder if they had the drink that they do. Like, they, they take, like, this special elixir drink. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Dude, I, Alamo's the shit. I wanted to know how they got that cup to, like, frost and boil over and all that. Dry ice. I was just thinking yeah. dry ice. But, I mean, like, to put it up to your mouth. <laughs> well, I'm sure they didn't really. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. They drank it. <laughs> This movie's so much better than Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it is. Uh, but Chan chose his own path. Chan did choose his own and path. And that is why Mortal Kombat gets a 10 out of 10. Do you think uh, Mortal Kombat took inspiration for Raiden from this film? Yeah. I would think so. I don't know. Maybe. Because it is... is what is Raiden based on? Is he based on like an actual, like folklore or something? I couldn't tell you. You don't know your Mortal Kombat. Nope, I'm history? sorry. I I know some storylines in Mortal Kombat, which is weird to say because there really isn't, but there are. But I don't know that. I don't know the making of Raiden. <laughs> Test your mind. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks that like we can't really. It's hard to talk about this film because it's just, it's great. It like this is what sucks sometimes when we do these films is when it's really good, we it, get nothing to talk it's, about. It's like, really unexplainable. Really, it's mm-hmm. you just kind of you have to have that experience of actually watching it. Yeah, I I can't shit on this movie. Like, there's you know, it's that being said, we don't try to shit on anything. No. sometimes we just watch it and we're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. stay alive. Yeah. It's easy to watch that come down here and be like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Or or like Tusk, where we, we all enjoyed it, but it was like, what the fuck was that that we just watched? Right. Or and it's flawed, but it's like the fun kind of flawed. Mm-hmm. Like, this, this is well put together. Like, I, I can't really knock it for anything. Like, Ebert didn't like this film. Well... He probably doesn't like campy, like, satirical... Well, I think back in the 80s, he took himself a lot more seriously. Ebert was very classic film. Like, mm-hmm. it had to follow a certain format. Everything or has a beginning, middle, and end. And... Yeah. 
granted, I think when he got a little older, that went away a little bit, mm-hmm. and I liked him more, but I don't know, to each their own. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this. Kurt Russell, what do you think of him as an actor? He's a great actor. I, I'm on, just asking because he's not exactly a box office draw, but he is a great actor. Not lately. I mean, you think about the things he's been in as of recent. I like, mean, I think the last movie he was in this year with Deepwater Horizon, that Mark Wahlberg oil rig film. Oh, he was in that? Yep. He, I think he played, like, the boss, the site boss or whatever. Kurt Russell, to me, is one of those guys that when he you see him in a movie, he, you know that he's going to portray that character great. Mm-hmm. Like, you just... You don't worry about it. He inhabits that role almost too well. So sometimes, like, shit might fly under the radar. Like, there's a Western that came out called Bone Tomahawk with Kurt Russell, and it's fucking crazy. Like, it's kind of a slow burn, but it is, at heart, a hardcore Western and surprisingly graphic movie Hmm. about... Wait, did that one have Clint Eastwood's son in it? I don't know. It okay. had a uh, Matthew Fox oh, from Lost, okay. but it's it's more about cowboys and Indians, and they run across this tribe that is cannibalistic, actually. Which you know you're you're taking some liberties there. I don't know how many Native Americans actually ate people. Is this Green Inferno? No, <laughs> no. This is way better than Green Inferno. Dances with Wolves. But I I don't know like. You think about shit like uh, The Hateful Eight, like Kurt Russell is... I still need to see that. He's god tier in that in that movie, dude. He's... He's I, great. You, you know what you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. Kurt Russell. See, who would you rather have in your movie? Kevin Costner or Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell. Russell. Um, Kevin Costner's like diet Kurt Russell... Like he's 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 like a stale version. Like he just kind of walks out. And he's like, Clark, I'm your dad. I don't know. <laughs> and then he dies in Man of Steel, and you're like, what the fuck? Whatever. Oh, like see here, I'm gonna go kind of through a couple of what he did. Um, not starting with his earlier stuff, but like his first big film was Used Cars, which I think we talked about once on this pod before. Like, just mentioned it. I've never it. even heard of it. I haven't either. Oh, thought I mentioned it once. But then he had Escape from New York. Mm-hmm. Then he had The Fox and the Hound, where he was the adult Cooper. My soul. Kurt Russell's in Fox and the Hound? Yeah. What? Then he did The Thing. Great, great movie. Then three films, four films I've never even heard of. So, Silkwood, Swing Shift, Terror in the Isles, and The Mean Season. So that's probably where he got worried because he had a bunch of box office flops. Then he had Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, the Best time, best of Times, Overboard, great film. Is it better than Captain Ron? I think it is. Him and Goldie Hawn together in that film, amazing. Their chemistry's great. Hmm. So, really funny, like... Her whole thing is, like, she's this rich, pompous, pompous asshole. Pretty much a rich bitch. And treats him like shit. He's just a local carpenter, and she wants, like, a certain thing put in her uh, yacht. She falls off the yacht, like, when it leaves to go out to sea. And he's just some poor, backwood, had three kids. His wife either died or left him. And she gets amnesia. And so he make it's kind of mean, but he makes her become his wife. He goes and claims wow. her at the at the hospital, and she becomes. And There's a social justice warrior getting triggered somewhere right now. <laughs> but it's actually it's really funny. Fucking cisgender male. <laughs> uh, he had Tequila Sunrise, Tango and Cash, Backdraft, Captain Ron. How can I forget Tombstone? Never saw it. You never saw it. We already talked about this. I have the remember. same reaction every time. Uh, I don't remember this. Probably because it's so, like, wow, he was in Forrest Gump. Um, but 
it's so unnerving to me that I forget that you haven't seen Tombstone because that film is amazing. Stargate, Executive Decision, Steven Seagal, oh, in that film, amazing. No. <laughs> but then, like, him in the 90s, he couldn't miss. Like, I'm looking at all these films in the 90s, couldn't miss, and then 2000 came and, yeah. Death Proof. As I was say, Death Proof. Send um, me a mic. Uh, Miracle? Miracle, that was the other one I was looking for. Dark Blue, I hear is really good. It's a cop film. Uh, Pos- the remake of Poseidon. It was okay. That bombed. Yeah. Actually, I thought it did all right, money-wise. We didn't have... I, when I worked at the theater back in 2006, nobody came to see that movie. Eh, yeah. It made its money back, but not much after that, so... But then, yeah, he, he's had the Furious movies. He's going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Really? Yep. I think he plays Chris Pratt's father. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's got Furious 8 coming up now, so, as well. I wasn't aware that he was in those movies. He was in 7 and now 8. Oh. Yeah. Alright. Time to watch him. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Kurt Russell is like, I wouldn't say he's underrated, because obviously he's been in big films. He's been a big name be- before, but at the same time, I just don't think his name gets brought up enough as a great actor. I mean, some of those actors, though, are just so good at what they do that it's just, like, they have such a, I, I don't know how to word it, like, it, it it's not always a standout role, mm-hmm. but they pull it off the best that they can. So I don't want to say they're all forgettable, but it's kind of, it, it doesn't draw as much attention. So you're still doing good work, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm sure he really enjoys acting because he's been doing it for, shit, he was born in 1960s what, something, he's been yeah. acting. I think his first movie role was in a an Elvis Presley movie, actually. And that's his part in Forrest Gump is he voices Elvis in Forrest Gump. That makes a lot of sense. He also has that movie, I think, with Kevin Costner called 3,000 Miles to Graceland, where they play like Elvis bank robbers. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. I never saw it, but I remember seeing the trailers. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And Backdraft, I hear, is like the pinnacle of like firefighter films. Yeah, I never saw it. No, I didn't either. But... And then you have Escape from New York, which is amazing, and then you have Escape from L.A., which no one needs to know about. Even though I own Escape it. from LA is the movie that he should have been upset about special. <laughs> I never saw either of those. You need to see New York. You can stay away from LA. Because, <laughs> yeah. There are a couple good things in LA. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi's really good in LA. Those fucking special effects. So. Oh, they were crap. There's a part where, it, did something blow up and he's on that wave mm-hmm. and surfing? Holy shit. Or when, oh. when they send him in that submarine to get to L.A. Because, like, L.A. had a huge earthquake that now it's separated from the United States. So he, they had to send him in, like, a submarine and that whole underwater sequence is just awful. I can't believe that was 96. When you told me that, I was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, those movies always seem to me like a, like a different version of, like, Con Air to me. Well, I kind of think that's why they did Escape from L.A. was like there was a revival of that type of film. It had been 15 years since New York, and they're like, now's the perfect time to do it. Mm-hmm. So, but. I mean, in the 90s, I think you could still make bank off an action movie. Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of like today, pretty hard, I think, to make actual. You have money. to have, yeah, you have to have a really good like premise or something. You have to do something new. Man, that man, Escape from LA made no money. <laughs> it didn't make it made half its budget back. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. That movie is fucking ridiculously bad. From what I remember, I, I just remember being like, This is uh this is not what I expected. He he had a lot of flops. Man. All these films I'm looking at 
made half or a third of their budget back. Starting to lose confidence in himself. Well, executive decision at least made money. He might have the same curse that Ryan Reynolds has, where he's always, you know, pretty really good, but the movie's just fucked for some reason. Like R.I.P.D., Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds, but just a bad movie. The beginning of that movie was solid, and then it fucking dropped way, way off. I was with it up to a certain point, and then, yeah. But it's it's not really something I can blame either one of those two for, Mm -hmm. like... I'm I'm thinking they were told this will be the next Men in Black, and they were like, okay. But it's one of the things where, like, um, oh, was it? When Ryan Reynolds did, was it, the, the change-up with Jason Bateman? Yeah. I remember watching, like, The Daily Show, and they had Jason Bateman on, and he's like, it was a film. Like, he was supposed to promote it, and he's like, we had fun making it. Who's, uh, Jason Bateman said yeah. that? He's like, Ryan's a great guy. We had a lot of fun. That's all I can say about the it's film. A, it's a movie. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, wow, this film's going to suck. Was it bad? Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Like, uh, I never saw it. That's except for kissing in a fountain or something. Yeah, and right? they switch bodies. and Like, them together, their scenes together, really good. Because they're both really comedic actors. But aside from that, the film's a piece of shit. So... Is Jason Bateman really a comedian? Oh, you said Jason Bateman. I thought you were talking about Jason Biggs. Wow. <laughs> oh, Jason Biggs is garbage. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, who are you talking? No, Jason Bateman. He's he's great. Yeah. I like Jason. I, Bateman. I think he's good if you let him do his what thing. he wants to do. Yeah. yeah. So not like Team Wolf Two. It'd be no. nice if studios would just chill the fuck out and let people actually do the ideas they want to do. I understand it's a financial you know, dice roll. Mm-hmm. But when it pays off, it's going to pay off so fucking well, good. Well, see, that's that's why I think, like, the Weinsteins are a lot better is because they let Kevin Smith, they're like, yeah, do whatever. They, they throw money at it. They're like, go, yeah, go do go whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, let's go into our uh, scenes. Jake, you had one in mind, so I'll let you go first. So, during that big final fight, uh, you got this... Guy in kind of like this Chinese armor coming towards Jack Burton. And uh, he hasn't done shit in this fight. Like, he shot the ceiling and got hit with fucking concrete and knocked out for a minute. Everybody else is doing this fight. And uh, he goes into the middle, is almost attacked by somebody else. I think someone threw one of the uh, yep. the fire things and throws him off. So you're like... Egg threw one of those... You, demon bangers you're waiting for him to do something Mm -hmm. and you know something's gonna happen so this this guy starts coming at him with an axe i believe and jack kind of awkwardly puts a knife on his shoe well he he has like a strap over that hides the knife right so he unsheats it but then he kicks the knife to the bottom of his boot and rolls onto his back. Which is actually pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy kind of leans forward when he's trying to get Swing. him. Yeah. And Jack kind of stabs him with his foot. And this guy kind of just hunches over. And, you know, Jack's got his legs pushed back. And he can't push him off. And this guy's on top of him for Yeah, he's, just, so, he's curled up in a ball with this guy just leaning on top of him. So it's showing this fight and everybody's continuing to do their thing. <laughs> They'll cut back to Jack and he's got his legs up and he's trying to move and he, he literally can't. And it just really drives home how, I don't want to say worthless, but kind of worthless his character was. <laughs> in an actual situation, yes. How... Yeah. how unheroic he actually is he, he did the bare minimum in terms of you know helping mm-hmm. which, which you know i would say that's the end of my favorite scene but uh the other is probably the end where he goes well it's either zero or double and then he goes well why don't i give you a triple and he goes well i earned it <laughs> yeah you're like what the fuck have you done how have you earned anything but all right whatever He's just, he's arrogant all the way to the end. It, but it's funny. Drew? Uh, I'd probably go along the same lines of, of 
Jake scene. I mean, basically when uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell, he, useless pretty much the whole movie up until the very end, you could mm-hmm. argue. Um, well, and they get into this compound, uh, and uh, I think it's one of the first scenes where they encounter guys that they have to fight. And I think uh, Kurt Russell loses his his SMG <laughs> and gets kicked off to the side or something like that. Or, uh, no, he, he runs out bullets. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. And uh, and so these guys start coming through, and he's looking for a weapon or something like that. I think. Oh, he, yeah, he reaches for his knife. Right. He th- he accidentally throws his knife across the room, and so he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go like find a weapon or something like that." All the meanwhile, uh, his buddy Wang is fucking kicking ass like crouching tiger hidden dragon jackie chan rumble in the bronx <laughs> fucking martial arting all these motherfuckers takes them all down and then kurt russell pops out with his knife and in his gun and he's like ha, i'm ready to take you fuckers on everybody's down that was pretty great amazing uh, i was gonna say what what mine is when so they have to try and sneak back into the compound where where the girls are being uh, held and where this wedding ceremony is going to happen to make Lu, Lupin human again. And they're going underneath downtown or uh, Chinatown in these tunnels. And like it, there's like babbling brooks and destroyed like uh bridges and trees and moss and all this other shit under there and you're like this is weird all of a sudden there's a tunnel and they're looking down the water and it's bubbling they're like it looks like something's breathing and then all of a sudden out of this hole comes this giant monster and it eats one of the other guys looked great by the way Mm -hmm. yeah but uh so then uh one of the bombs gets thrown in there and he goes, it shall not come out. Kurt Russell's like freaking out. Like everybody else is like, yeah, this makes sense. He's like, what won't come out? What was that thing? What is going on? Somebody tell me. <laughs> he just like, he he tries to put on like a hero face, but that at that point he was just like, what the fuck? What is this? It was too much. Where are we? What is going on? <laughs> Uh, it, it just, all of his, uh, messing with any mystical Chinese stuff, it's just, it's hilarious. Like, when they're looking for the, and then my other scene is when they're work, looking for an elevator to get to the wedding ceremony, and Wang finds, like, a false wall. He's like, and, uh, Carussell's like, is it hollow? Yeah, fuck it. And he just cuts it open. He's <laughs> like, oh. That was a pretty good line. Yeah. They were sick of just looking for switches because there's like a bunch of like hidden panels and secret walls and mm. shit all in this compound. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, Kurt, Kurt Russell's bravado, and I wonder if that line was improvised because that was hilarious. But I don't think it was. But it was just hilarious. Just that his timing and everything in this film is great. So, but yeah. Uh, any trivia or anything? I mean. We talked about Jack Nicholson and Clint Eastwood were offered the role, which could you, you have, imagine either one? Of I was them. gonna say, could you imagine either one? Um, the budget for this was projected twenty to twenty five million, and it made eleven. Mm. Ouch. Yes, but it it like I said, it made it has a cult following. Like now, it has an eighty four percent Rotten Tomatoes. It has over a seven on IMDb. Um. Yeah, uh, like, people praise Russell's performance, uh, but like Roger Ebert said, special effects don't mean much unless we care about the characters who are surrounded by them, and in this movie, the characters often seem to exist only to fill up the foreground. I can, I can kind of understand what he's saying in terms of outside of Jack Burton, you don't really know the motivation for a lot of the characters, I guess. Other than, you know, they're trying to do the right thing, but you don't really know much about what gets... See, but at the same time, you do, because, like, the whole thing is, like, his friend Wang, he's taking him so he can get his money, and then his girl gets kidnapped while it's his friend. He also loses his truck, so that doesn't help either. So he can't go anywhere because he's missing his truck. Wang needs to get his girlfriend back. And so there, there is that motivation. 
And then right. they kind of just get mixed up into the whole Chinese mystical arts thing. But I think what he's saying is, why should I care about your girlfriend or your truck? Yeah. They didn't really... I don't know. It's... I, I wouldn't agree entirely. I wouldn't even call that a con. Mm-hmm. But I can understand how somebody might feel that way, is more what I'm trying to say. There There is a... In case anybody's wondering, there is a Blu-ray available of this film. Um, there is for most films. Well, some, like you said, Brain Dead. They didn't have any release. No, there was a Blu ray. Oh, is there? Just not here. Ah. It's see. Region 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this film, when it came out, it it obviously suffered. But since has it, like we said, it became a cult classic. And it has a. Re- when it was released on home video, it actually made a lot of money. And actually, uh, Empire Magazine, I'm. Uh, listed as in 2008 listed as the 430th greatest film of all time 500 that's high praise (laughs) that's a lot of films yeah that's a lot of movies but at the same time if you think about it what an exhausting list I know that's what I thought too who goes to 500 (laughs) but still you know, how many films didn't make that list? That, no, I, I, I don't mean to take away no, from it. it's still a huge list. I'm just like, that's a gigantic fucking list. I've never heard anybody going to 500, but fair enough. Yeah. But still, yeah. Um, and then supposedly a remake is in the work with Dwayne Johnson. I really hope not. The Rock wants to portray... Wait, so... Th- this is the rock that wants to do it. Yes. It's his idea. Yes. It's on IMDb, dude. Yep. Oh, no. And he wants John Carpenter to come back, but John Carpenter said he's ambivalent People towards doing it. People want a lot of shit. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen. You can't just fucking... <laughs> God damn it. You guys want to know the final body count of this movie? Sure. 46. Hmm. How many of those were the same actor? I don't know. Because <laughs> I swear some answer. of the same people 39. died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just the extra four, the the, the the four, the three storms and the other guy. <laughs> Are you saying they all look alike? No, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I know. I just like to make you look like a monster. Uh, no. There there was one scene with a giant well. Yep. I and... knew this was <laughs> I knew you were I watched you metaphorically lean forward and flip that card. (laughs) And Jake got hard. I was fucking six to midnight. (laughs) I was like, I could fit so many kids in that well. You also said you would have died. (laughs) Well, he had to do a sit-up to save himself. And I would have (laughs) just probably farted and fell to my death. (laughs) Kurt Russell threw a wheelchair down there and Jake is like, what a waste! (laughs) Speaking of farting, I heard this on the radio today. There was a woman, oh gosh, where did they say? They were doing a procedure on her stomach. It, it, it involved a laser. And some of her uh, gases leaked. And it started the operating room on fire. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. She was She was burned. <laughs> To death? Not to death. Oh, okay. She was burned. God, that's hard to explain when you wake up from your procedure. <laughs> oh, good. So listen, you farted, the room caught on fire. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say, uh, you, you burned to death. Wait, she's not waking up if she burned to death. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't really tell people that they burned to death. <laughs> oh. So does she look like Freddy Krueger now? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. That's just a bonus. It's fucked up, man. It is fucked up. Yeah, a a Japanese woman passed gas during laser surgery and she was badly (laughs) burned. Uh, I don't know why. I I feel bad laughing at that. That's such a crazy thing. Yeah. The inflammability, inflammability isn't concerned. But one woman in Japan proved to be tragic and lasting impact. The woman in her 30s, who had not been named, was undergoing surgery on her cervix. In the midst of the operation, while doctors focused a laser on her cervix, the lower part of the uterus, the woman passed gas. And 
So it's difficult to overstate how many skilled chance of that normal bodily function causing a problem truly is, but it ignited the gas, causing a blaze that caught the surgical drape on fire before spreading down to her skin. Man, that must have been a rank-ass fart. And um, it burned her body, particularly from her waist down her legs. That's unpleasant. Yeah. So, that's... Thank you for sharing that. No problem. <laughs> I'm sure the listeners are like, yep, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> I didn't know that I wanted this, but I now I know. <laughs> Now that's you know, my fetish. Now you know that's why you do not eat after they tell you when not to eat. So you don't start farting and <laughs> catch laser equipment on fire. I mean, that's just a normal thing. Yeah, I know. But if your stomach is empty... I don't know, Ty. I'm pretty sure you can fart with an empty stomach. Eh, probably. I'm I don't not, know. I'm not how a doctor. The, I'm not sure how the human body works. I don't know either. I just wake up and go. Yeah. And then one day you don't. And then one day you don't. <laughs> Anyways, let's go on to reviews. Unless anybody has anything extra. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, my movie, my review first. Yeah, I, uh, I, had, I had every intention of doing this film eventually, but I brought a film to these guys that was a romantic comedy and... What the hell are you thinking, by the way? Yeah, I thought we hadn't done the genre yet. Thought, why not try it? But no, they weren't for it. I off, I had big trouble in Little China in my back pocket just in case. Because I didn't want to make them mad because I did just do Stay Alive. So... You fucking masochist. <laughs> but it, it, I think this is a great film. I've loved this film since I was a kid. Uh, Kurt Russell's just an amazing actor. He has great timing. He, he just... He, enlivens the script and the scenery and everything he does and he just portrays this non-hero so well with like the, this guy who does nothing with the john wayne ego and it just carries the film like not that the film is bad but he carry he helped carries this film easily and the sets are great the special effects not outstanding but are for its time and for now, knowing the cost, they're they're good. I wish a lot of these movies that had bigger budgets had as good special effects. Um, but yeah, with that said, I I'll give it a nine. Wow. Um, yeah, I had never seen this before, and I uh, I, I loved it. I I thought it was a really great uh, '80s action movie that I. You know, kind of had it an unexpected twist um, with the fact that your main protagonist is not really your main protagonist. He's more a supporting character than anything else, but uh, charismatic and kind of steals the thunder. Ha! Huh. Oh, God. <laughs> that was unintentional. I don't want that tied to me at all. Doctor? Doctor? Oh, God. <laughs> Um, Kurt Russell's fantastic. Um, Kim Cattrall's nice to look at. <laughs> the, uh, the main guy, the, the Chinese guy that's beating everyone's Wang. ass. Pretty good. Um, yeah, the, the martial arts in this movie was actually pretty acceptable. I understand using the word acceptable doesn't really sound like a shiny endorsement, but... It, it's we're, fine. We're, <laughs> no, we're, we're talking 80s martial arts. Like, there are some obvious, like, green screen moments. Like, when they're fighting, right, sword fighting right next to each other in the air. Rubber cement. That's what we should have called it. Oh! Rubber. <laughs> rubber cement. The bouncy cement. When they're in the original fight, when they get hit on the ground in the... Cement moved. Oh, yeah. You should call rubber, it rubber cement. Rubber cement. That's but, br cause, brilliant. Because there's a dual meaning there. Yeah. But, like, when they're fighting in the air in that big last battle, and they're sword fighting. and It was like Crouching Tiger. That's yeah. exactly what it was. F flying up, and it, it was an epic fight. Like, it built to a, you know, satisfactory climax. <laughs> Which is something I wish that a woman would have said to me in my life. <laughs> wow. 
you, right. you took a dark turn. <laughs> Eight out of ten. <laughs> yeah, <it's> done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the first time I ever saw this movie. Uh, I had always been meaning to watch it. I, I love Kurt Russell. Um, he really, really shines in this. Um, and it's it's really sad to see that this, this movie was kind of bombed. It, it did bomb. This I mean, is why we can't have nice things. I mean, you, you show out the movie 16 days before Aliens come out comes out. And th- but they also had to rush it because uh, I forget I think it was not Par- who does the stars over the mountain is that Paramount yeah it's Paramount yeah they decided to release Golden Child like and like John Carpenter said how many movies about Chinese mysticism has been done in the last twenty years and for another studio to decide at the same time we're doing this to do one with the Golden Child starring Eddie Murphy he's like it. Th- this is stupid. You ever notice that happens sometimes? Mm-hmm. Like, something will be coming out, and then, like, another movie just exactly like it just comes yep. out of nowhere. Well, like, when Robert Downey Jr. was going to do his Sherlock Holmes, Will, uh, Will Ferrell was in talks to do, like, a spoof one with, like, Sasha Barrett Cohen. They were going to do, like, a spoof of Sherlock Holmes. It sounds like AIDS. Yeah. Well, it didn't come to be, so. But. I mean, that, that's that's crazy to me that the... the it didn't catch as much attention as it did and then really didn't catch much traction until it came out on video so um but i you've you've got a lot of great stuff here uh you guys pretty much mentioned it all um yeah i i, I really dug a lot of the martial arts uh, i'm i'm kind of big on that i love movies like the raid and and uh ong bok and and uh it man and all that, all that kind of crazy stuff. So it was, it was cool to see that they had some legit martial arts in this movie. Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, Kung, Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's it, it's it's good. Uh, the story, the story is a little convoluted. That's the only thing I really knock the knock it for. Um, it, it gets confusing at times, but I found this movie genuinely entertaining, and I give it an eight as well. It's just a great ride. Yeah, I definitely watch it again. And, and the humor totally keeps you invested. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. The creepy old guy in the chair. Just... That laugh though. <laughs> that was pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely check this movie out if you're yeah. into like action flicks it, and comedy. It, it and... is on Netflix, so easily accessible. I'm actually sad that I waited this long to watch it. So am I. Uh, would you call this a kid's movie? Or better yet, would you allow kids to watch this movie? I watched it when I was like eight. But that was like a TV version, so I didn't know that... I forgot there was an F-bomb in this film. Um, there's one, and it's kind of quick, but it was in one of my scenes I called, so he literally just says, fuck it. And I was like, wow, I forgot there is an F-bomb in this film. But really, I there really is anything. Like, the kids wouldn't catch his whole hitting on... Kim Cattrall, like, they'd be like, oh, he's flirting with her. Like, they wouldn't catch the uh, bad lines he's feeding her about pretty much just wanting to hook up. So, but other than, really, they're, they're nothing bad. There's no blood, really. Be- Stick. Yeah. The- no, he's like, he stabs her with that needle. Yeah, but he bleeds, not her. It's tiny drops of blood. Yeah, but it's his bleeding, not her bleeding. So, really, there, there's no blood. There's very little language. I I don't see why kids couldn't watch this. I was just thinking, like, as a kid, I would have loved this. Not that I don't love it now. No. But I did love it as a kid, so, yeah. And I watched Terminator 2 all the time as a kid, so. See that Arnold naked ass? Yeah, that's what I tuned in for. I need your boots, your clothes, and your motorcycle. I was just going to ask you to, to quote that exact line. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Why? Uh, just because I always do it? Well, no, because he said he was naked, and he goes, I need your boots. Or... <laughs> and he goes, you forgot to say please. And he burns the cigar on him. <laughs> that movie's so fucking badass. <laughs> How dare you try to make a sequel to that movie? Hey, I mean, they can't. That, the, true. That sequel's twist at the end, though... Does save that film. What sequel? Three. The twist at the end? Yeah. Saves the second one? No, saves the third one. 
like just makes it it's like you know holy shit damn you know i thought the third was an abortion <laughs> jeez that's just me and then they got worse and genesis is one of the worst I, fucking pieces of shit i've I'd... ever seen <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly but I'm saying three at least they were ballsy enough for that ending that remember the part in three where Arnold puts on the Elton John sunglasses yes gosh great movie it's no. fine no it's not <laughs> it's 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 a very by the numbers film but that ending I have to say that ending is really good the ending was surprising yes that's all I'll say about it <laughs> but Anyways, um, yeah, so eight, eight, and a nine. I'll take it. <laughs> no, this this was a solid pick. I'm I'm glad you picked it rather than whatever the fuck else you. Were I think you about. guys would enjoy the film, but it's yeah. fine. I don't think you've watched a rom com with me. <laughs> Does it fill no, you I'm with not hatred? A fan. <laughs> it's got to be really good for me to be like, yeah. Okay. It, it's. I'll have to discuss off mic with you guys kind of the storyline. I think you would enjoy it. So for next week, Jake picks Nicholas Sparks' The Notebook. Oh, God. I will kill you. I hate that film. I'm actually going to go as far from that as humanly possible (laughs) and pick a movie neither one of you have seen, I don't believe, called Requiem for a Dream. Ooh. Ooh. That's, uh, Wayne's is in that, and Leto, right? Yep. Darren Aronofsky. Mm -hmm. I think we can have a good talk. I feel like I say that every time. I'm like, here's what I'm picking. I think we can talk about it. Because I have a podcast. <laughs> if we don't talk, I'll just throw you in a well. <laughs> <laughs> Is she a big fat girl? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, alright, well, we'll if, if Jake actually sticks to a movie we pick. <laughs> How many times have I... You've done it twice at least. Yeah. And I think both times I picked contact. Yeah. I still have the contact. <laughs> I think I do, I've done it twice. I say I think this is the first time I've done it. It happens. Or no, second because I decided to switch it to Ghostbusters because Drew couldn't do it. So I thought you were going to do something else, and then you did Stay Alive too. No, I think I was pretty set on Stay Alive. Oh, okay. I think I left it open ended, like I didn't commit to anything. Yeah. So when we don't commit, listeners, that's not because we're being wishy washy. It's because we don't like to be like, "Hey, we're gonna do this," and then change our mind, and then yeah. you're like, "Well, what the fuck is this?" Mm-hmm. All three of you. Because sometimes things change, and we want to recognize with a different film, <laughs> or sometimes we can't find the movie that we're looking for. That also happens. That happened to you once. Yeah, Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Well, no, me, the one time we were still able to watch it, but I couldn't find it. Never happened to me. I plan ahead further than, you know, ten hours. (laughs) That's no way to live life, Jake. Yeah, really. Come on. Oh, you mean being prepared? Yeah. Come down to our level. Fuck that. Don't be like John Goodman in 10 Cloverfield Lane. You know, I can manage to murder kids in my off time and still pick the movie. You got a lot on your plate, or in your well. Oh. I never said I eat them. No. So they're not on my plate. No. I just meant metaphorically on your plate. It got a little darker than I thought. <laughs> All right, well. Now, t- now we're talking about eating, kids. <laughs> on that weird note. Um... <laughs> hey, hey you, one of your shows, did you ever throw a kid in the crowd? And <laughs> you ripped a yeah. bar and then throw it on stage. This is a little annoying eight-year-old kid we didn't like. Bradley, fuck that kid. <laughs> Pushed him out. It's like a Simon and Garfunkel show. <laughs> yeah, we're playing just like, holy fuck. We were playing polka music. <laughs> or fucking Weird Al or something. Yeah. Oh. God, that headline would be fucking amazing. <laughs> Eight-year-old <laughs> boys kid is, kid is the ripped, crowd ripped apart. <laughs> at polka concert. I mean, it would be horrifying. <laughs> but I'd laugh the entire time I read it. It's like some shit out of Dead Alive, What if man? you were there? Like, you were at the show <laughs> And you feel something splash on yeah. you, and you're like, oh my god, it's entrails. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, somebody spilled a beer on me. And you're like, oh. That's just small intestine. <laughs> oh, no one let a match. <laughs> Man, I've never been to a show that hardcore. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. 
<laughs> like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to hear more about you know bodies being mutilated, like and subscribe. Share. Oh, tell your friends. Uh, don't tell the cops. <laughs> Honestly, if you're liked and subscribed to us, you may want to reevaluate your <laughs> choices. Uh, face- but we love you. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, email, tjdmoviereviews at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, still looking for some uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Leslie Jones fan art. So How do you know I haven't already got that? Oh, have you? Because you can tell by the look on my face. That, the I- fact you're still here suggests... And not furiously <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> I'm chafing. <laughs> no, nobody has said me anything. <laughs> Thank God. And uh, Jake's always looking to book reservations for birthday parties in as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've already booked my reservation. <laughs> but, um, so next week we have Requiem for a Dream. And, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. One last like and subscribe. Enjoy your week. Bye. Bye.